Hello, everyone. Um, whether you're listening live to this uh, broadcast or whether you're watching it on YouTube, I'd like to welcome you. Um, I'm joined today by four of our um, illustrious alumni. Uh, and the objective of our, our discussion today is to just illustrate what it's like for someone who's coming as an international student to DMU um, and then studying at DMU, settling into Leicester. Uh, and in the case of the, the four alumni that are with us today, they actually settled in Leicester after they graduated, which is a great story. So I'm joined today by uh, Juliana, who joined us um, from Argentina via Spain, um, Euphemia, who came from Zimbabwe, uh, Alice, who came from Romania, and Rupinda, who came from India. So what I want to do is just start asking a few questions. So um, I'll start with Juliana because she, uh, she was recruited first to this event. Um, so Juliana, when and what did you study at DMU? Well, we need to go back in time. Hello, everyone, first. I um, I came here to Leicester in 1998 to do a master in um, fashion and textiles at the Moffat University. So, a long time ago. Okay. And as, as I understood when we talked um, before, when we first met, uh, you came here via Spain. You were You were in Spain. Yes, what it was good is when I finished my first, my BA in Argentina, I got the bursary to go to Spain. And in there I was um, studying at the University of Catalonia. And they offered me this chance to come to the, um, England, to the Montfort University, to do further studies in textile technology. Mm -hmm. But when I was here, um, I, you know, they always say, you know, just knock doors and see what happens. So, I was I was going to do some engineering, textile engineering uh, courses, but then I saw this opportunity to do a master in arts and design, and I just went and asked if there were some spaces available, and you know it was so good because they opened the door and they they allowed me to to do this master in in fashion and textile. It was excellent, very nice. Okay. Excellent. So it was you found it welcoming then very welcoming it was uh, welcoming and flexible and and you know you know the the professors that i have there it was professor ray holland and professor tom cassidy which i'm still in touch and yeah. uh, they were able you know they were very friendly and say okay what do you want to do how you wanted to do it and and enjoying the master even though the master was already starting so i was one one month late but they say you know because of the background and our working experience you know they say yes come come with us you know, so it was fantastic. And how did you, okay, you've explained that it was uh, welcoming at DMU as a campus and uh, staff were very welcoming. How did you find Leicester as a city, as someone coming from a different continent? Yes, well, uh, I think um, one of the things that really surprised me, it was the diversity in the city. So Leicester is well known about, you know, here we can find every single community from every part of the world, maybe not as much from Latin America, but certainly there was a lot of people from everywhere, you know, and so this is, you know, what I saw at the time, what a fantastic opportunity to be in one place, but surrounded by so many different nationalities. Mm -hmm. and, and I think this is one of the great things of uh, being in Leicester, you know, it's a very welcoming place, but also a very diverse place, you know. Yeah, great. Okay. Euphemia, can I ask you the same question? So when you came to, um, to DMU uh, and what you studied? I, I graduated in 2012 and my area of study was uh, historical studies. So I, I had a PhD in historical studies in 2012. So um, I was studying part time, uh, juggling work, uh, with with studies, but I, I found the DMU very welcoming and they did a lot of support. And I remember going to for English is it English support? They had a department that helps students with uh, with English. Um, I, I'm originally from Harare, although in Harare they they use English 
in schools and they use English formally in the workplaces. I thought I was, you know, my communication skills were quite okay. I never thought, I, I never dreamt, not even a single moment that I, I was going to need this extra English help, support. But um, when, when I arrived in Leicester, the time I was studying, I, I noticed that people were struggling to hear what I was saying. So they kept saying, pardon, pardon. Uh, thank God there was this English support unit. And then I went there, I managed to network with other students from the international, like other countries. And in the end, I managed to polish up my listening and speaking skills. But uh, what I cherish most is the, is the friendship. And some of the people I met there, I'm still in touch with them. And, I, and if, yeah. That's great. And what, what about, and, and the same as I asked uh, Juliana, how did you find Leicester as a city? Um, you know, having having come all the way from Africa to to study, hey, I, I find there's, there's a lot. Leicester as a city has a lot to offer, and well, what really uh, amazed me is the diversity. Like the cultural mix, there's a diversity cultural mix, uh, and I understand because my studies is part, uh, partly t touched on the immigration that has taken place. So I understand that over hundreds of, of years, people have been coming over to settle in Leicester and they've brought along with them their rich cultural heritages. And mm -hmm. in the process, some people have like, uh, they've introduced new things, things like uh, new foods. So if you were to go to any restaurant in, Le in, in Leicester, like in Leicester, you wouldn't be surprised to come across like food you can find elsewhere. So that's the beauty. And uh, if I can like touch on the groups of people we have come, we have people like we have originally come from from Eastern Europe. We have people we have come from Asia. But we, we we have also people we have come from the Caribbean uh -huh. and Africa. And uh, like and in the Ugandan Asians who we arrived in the 1980s, so they've all brought a rich, a cultural heritage, and there's so much to benefit. Okay, that's great. Alice. Hello, everyone. Alice, that is your story. How did you come to, to DMU? What did you study? Yeah, I came to DMU exactly 10 years ago. Um, and I came um, here to do my master's in design management. And I remember when I first applied for, uh, for my master's, I was under the impression that I will be the only international student in the whole of the DMU and the whole of Leicester. And when I arrived, I realized that I was very, very wrong. I had a, a, a skewed perception, I guess. Um, and I realized that both DMU and Leicester were um, such as, as Juliana and uh, Euphemia mentioned, such diverse, um, there's such a diverse community and diverse culture I ended up making friends with people from Uruguay, from Thailand, from one of my best friends is Dutch. Um, and also, of course, learning as much as I could about um, the British culture. So I had such a good experience. And of course, I liked it so much because I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> good answer, good answer. And, and did you find, um, you found the city, uh, you just mentioned that you found, you know, it was diverse, much more diverse than you'd obviously expected. Did you find it welcoming? Did you did you find you were able to settle in um, outside of university life easily? Definitely. Yes, definitely. I think because Leicester, it might seem small on the map, but it actually it's quite mighty in terms of what you what you can do. There's a little bit of everything for everyone. I mean, I'm one of those people who enjoys a drink outside in a pub, which you will see and find loads here in Leicester. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I also like to walk. I want to go for walks in the countryside, which again, um, there are loads of parks and national parks, which are breathtaking. So there's mm -hmm. a little bit for everyone, regardless age, regardless culture or uh, ethnicity or language. There are there are loads and loads of things that you can do here. Okay, great. Thanks, Alice. Rupinda, last but not least. So when, <laughs> when did you come to the MU? What did you study? Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. 
So I came to the UK and um, to DMU in 2017, towards the end of 2017. And I did my master's in interior design. So um, I graduated in 2019, but then uh, I did not want my journey to stop there. So at that point, while I was graduating, I was still looking at different opportunities to still continue uh, working in the UK and taking my education ahead. Mm -hmm. So uh, I applied for a startup visa and the university was uh, actually really helpful in walking me through the whole process of how to do it. and. Uh, we had a couple of interview sessions and everything and then eventually the university did select me and they endorsed me and mm -hmm. yes, that's the reason why I'm here today and uh, it's it's going good. It's been um, it's been a difficult journey right from like I did not come with a vision to start a business here in the UK, but during the whole process and towards the end of my course, I knew that I had to do something. So I, I am glad mm -hmm. that I'm glad that I could, you know, get it into uh, starting my business here. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And uh, and for you, how, how was it um, in terms of Leicester as a city? How did you find how did you find life in Leicester? Yeah, so actually I was uh, really scared to come uh, to stay to go out of my comfort zone. I have always been living in India and uh, staying away from my family from my parents for a long time it did seem a little scary in the beginning but when you come to the leicester you're not the only international student like alice mentioned there are so many people with you with you they are going through a similar experience so it just makes you feel a lot more comfortable at that point and then uh, just interacting with them meeting new students and i am so glad that the course that i was in we had a very nice mixture of people from Europe, from Nigeria, from Belgium, Nigeria, India, China, that uh, it helped us to learn a lot from each other, you know, that how they work and how they approach design, which I think mm -hmm. is very important in design. We are just stuck with how we work, but it's really good to know how people mm -hmm. from different uh, parts of the world work. So that was really nice. And um, actually, when I came to Leicester, it did snow that year. So it was my first year that I experienced actual <laughs> snowfall. It, it might sound silly, but uh, yeah, back in my city in India, it doesn't snow. It's always it's like hot, scorching heat there. But when oh. I came here, that was that was a really uh, pleasant experience. That's that's excellent. That's an excellent story, um, Alice. In terms of um, culture, were you able to keep in touch with your roots? culturally when you arrived you know did you find it easy to find things to do that um you know kept, kept you in touch with with home if you like yeah i think um to, to best answer your question i think I, I need to tell you a little bit more about myself and how i am as a person i think one of the things that i i like to do is to experience cultures that are outside my own so one of my key um, or one of my aims was to, to try to experience as much as I could outside of my culture. And yes, there are many opportunities to stay within, um, let's say, the Romanian community. But at the same time, my whole aim um, for me to start this adventure and to learn as much as I could about culture is to explore, experience food that I never tried before, um, mm -hmm. experience um, different traditions and different, um, you know, approaches to life, I guess. It was part of my, I guess, part of my personal development and my growth. So um, I would recommend to embrace culture, cultures that are outside your own, even if it's not your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Uh, Euphemia, you, you mentioned earlier that you, you know there was a, a rich mix of culture that, that you um, weren't expecting when you arrived. How, how did you find it? Were you, you were able to find things that you felt you needed or wanted to do that um, perhaps you, you thought you wouldn't be able to? Um, I, it's a very lovely place. You can get almost everything. I was quick to adapt 
uh, to the local culture, the food and everything. But the, the good thing about Leicester, it's, it's like um, when people, people have been coming over when they came up, uh, they established some in some businesses in the manufacturing sector and some it covers uh, things like supermarkets and the like uh, and the uh, services uh, that they now provide which have broadened up so it, it's like in some of the shops i'm able to buy some foodstuffs that are originally from home so food wise i've managed to keep connected but at the same time I've, I've, I've adapted to the English way of life as well. And okay. even like uh, my kids, they went to Rashmidi and they, they, they also eat Asian food and we eat it. And it's like uh, I've, I'm trying to, to, gain, to, to make uh, the most of my being here and trying to adapt. Okay. So it's quite a, a, I find it a quite a beautiful place. And, yeah. But if you if you wanted to eat food that was familiar, you could find it. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah it's easily available in some of the sh the shops. Yeah. Okay. Good. Juliana, mm -hmm. same question to you. In terms well, of culture, there are so many things happening in Leicester, you know, and I think there are so many things that I could share with you. One of the things is there is a, a lot of uh, festivals, you know, happening and there is a lot of, you know, street festivals that it's a joy to participate in them. And there is a, one organization called Journey International that every year, well, except last year because of the pandemic, they will, they do every time um, outdoor festivals. And when you have opportunities to share, and as Agnes was saying, not only about your own culture, but about different cultures, you know, so they talk about the history of immigration and how many people came to this, uh, to this country, you know, and there is uh, many, many opportunities and when you can learn something new, you know. So I think one of the things from Leicester is very good, the festivals that they have. Another thing that is very good from Leicester culturally, it is the Phoenix Cinema. And uh, I don't know if you've been uh, to the Phoenix Cinema, but it was something that you have to do, you know. When we were doing this master, we had some time and we were going to the Phoenix because the Phoenix have a diverse program. And since I, I started going to the Phoenix now, it moved to the cultural quarter in Leicester. And again, you know, there is a lot of, uh, you know, they have, at the moment they have two independent cinemas there, but there is an expansion. They're going to have four. They're going to open two more. And um, the board members of the Phoenix Festival, they are trying to bring a new programming, which include, you know, cinema from all over, all over the world, you know. So what a fantastic okay. place there, you know, to enjoy uh, different cultures, but also as well sometimes having, you know, because during the... It's true that when you are abroad, sometimes it's nice as well to find these links to your own culture. So sometimes yeah. we're going to watch a movie that it was from Latin America or from Spain, you feel a, a bit at home as well, you know? So yeah. back home. So there is plenty of opportunities here to have both, to experience new different cultures, but also have the opportunity to go back to your own one. Okay, excellent. That was, that was a really good answer. Rupinda. Yes. And for you, so um, honestly speaking, I think even you must be aware with it that every corner there are Indian uh, street food shops and there's a lot of shops, even Tesco's, even the local shops, like uh, the local British shops do sell a lot of Indian spices. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that is something that anyone will miss when they come here. There is plenty of Indian food around. And um, having said that, it's, it's the reason we step out of our country and come to another country to learn to study is to you know experience even a different way of life so um apart from going out having indian food it's also important to just explore other cultures explore what other things are there and um apart from food there is so much else to do like you know you can there are you can go for yoga classes you can go for salsa classes you can go for walks in the park there are even in the leicester city center there are like historical areas and um just step out on a Sunday, take a map with you, and then there's so much you can see, you know. And um, it's Leicester as a city is very rich in architectural buildings. So every corner you go, you'll find something beautiful. You'll find a different sort of architecture. It's it's every like there are so many places without which are worth photographing, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, it's about just going out and you know experiencing so much more and 
uh, it's a very you it's it's sort of a place which makes you feel safe there there whenever you step out you will see familiar faces maybe from like maybe from the asian community or you know from the people you you have in your student halls and things like that so it yeah. makes you feel a much more safer to you know step out go and explore mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I yeah. just uh, say something else, you know, of in terms course. of the um, sports offer that there is in Leicester as well, you know, I don't know if, you know, there is, if you, either you are uh, following football or you are a rugby fan, there is an opportunity here to explore. And I just got a little story that in 2015, there was a, a World Rugby uh, World Cup here in, in the UK. And uh, in Leicester particularly, they were hosting one match that it was from Argentina. So this is, you know, one of the best days of my life because Leicester was all dressed with Argentinian flags. So mm -hmm. from, if you know, coming from Victoria Park to, to going to the um, uh, Leicester Football Stadium, all this way was with, with Argentinian flags. You know, it was one of the best memories that we have as a family with my kids who they are playing rugby here in a local rugby club but also going there and, you know, everyone welcoming uh, our country, you know. And on the same day that we watched this match, it was fantastic. We also have Diego Maradona in Leicester. So if you're a football fan and you understand the story of football with Argentina, on the same day, it was like everything was possible, you know, having, you know, Maradona there, you know, the cheering up for the rugby, uh, the, our, our rugby team. And, and this is, you know, sport is also is very important here in, in, uh, in Leicester, you know, so there is plenty of opportunity to join different clubs, you know, um, yeah. and make yourself, you know, not only healthy, but also uh, another way to find new friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have, uh, we have uh, quite a lot of students from um, Malaysia, uh, sorry, alumni from Malaysia, and they're talking a lot at the moment about the football, sending pictures and asking for details. So, um, yeah, I think a lot of uh, male alumni, usually, but uh, it's not exclusively male, of course. OK, so um, let's come back to Euphemia. And um, how did you spend your free time, uh, Euphemia, when you, when you came? Uh, and did it change from the beginning to the end of your course? Or? Um, when I, I first came, because I'm, a, I'm an artist type of person, so I used to go like it, to places like the theatre, the cave, uh, to see performing arts, things like comedy. And also I used to go to the air market to watch see cinemas. And um, the, f the very first few years of my uh, my arrival in, in, in Leicester, I I went about like sightseeing because most of the places were new to me. So I was going places because Leicester is a lot of attraction centers that one can go and see. And uh, of recent, uh, of recent, I, I think we are all aware of the city king. King Richard III, the visitor center where you can go to and watch. So I've been to places like the, you know, the cathedral, the cathedral museums. Yeah, they, there are two museums in, I think one is in Wellington Street. So, so I've been there and and I also went to, to visit a Leicester uh, football club premises. They have a shop and you can have the chance to buy there are stuff like flags and everything. It's, it's really love because people actually travel to come there and just have a look and taking pictures. So Leicester has a lot, lots of uh, places and, and there are lots of activities. Like every year, you know, there are certain events that goes. Like where I stay, we do like the, I, I've i taken part in some of the events like Diwali festivities. <laughs> You know, when the whole town goes ablaze with light, it's so beautiful. So there, there's a lot, like it's non-stop, event after event. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the beauty. Russell, we cannot hear you. Sorry, I do that in Teams meetings. My team will be laughing now. <laughs> Alice, how about you? What, what did you do with your spare time? 
Well, um, in the beginning, we used to stay sort of localized to Leicester. Uh, we used to go to pubs. We There's a, an amazing nightlife here in Leicester. Um, so as I said, there's a little bit for for everyone, cinemas, as, as the ladies also mentioned. Um, but one of the greatest things that I found about Leicester is, is the fact that it's located in the Midlands, which means that you can travel. You can travel quite easily. You can get to London very, very quickly. You can get to um, other British landmarks that I, there were on my bucket list for a while. Um, and what's also great about the MU is that they offered those um, daily excursions, which meant that we could go as a, as a bigger group. So um, one of my favorite uh, memories from the time I was an MA student was visiting Tate. Uh, modern in London, which became one of my favorite places to visit ever. But um, I think that's that's what I would say in terms of Leicester. You, there's a lot to explore within Leicester, but the geographical location of, of Leicester, the Midlands, it just opens up so many opportunities to explore the whole UK. Mm. Yeah. And of course, the, the public transport is yeah from, from here is pretty good isn't it with the national express you can get anywhere exactly the, the train station is walking distance from from the campus yeah. too and and there are so many deals for students you just have to have your student card and then you can get many many deals just to travel and explore and um mm -hmm. just to learn as much as you can about um the uk good juliana Yeah. And how about you? What did you do with your spare time? I was, um, I mean, we are talking, you know, ages ago, 1998, yeah? So I'm sure things have changed what I was doing with part time then, back then and now. But as I remember, I think it was Wednesday when all the students were going out. And there is a thing, and Alice said, there is a very nice um, nightlife here, you know? So we were two different you know, pubs and clubs, and we were doing this. And I remember, you know, I was, I came with a group of Spanish people, you know, and uh, not a group of Catalan people. Sorry if they listen to me and I say, but, um, and, you know, and party was something very important. And I, I remember that they found a Spanish pub there and we were going there as well. And uh, and I think also a mass was going to the cinema and going to the Phoenix and, and have something, you know, you know, every week or every two weeks. To, to have something, obviously at the time that I started, the curve um, wasn't there, there, but obviously if I was a student today, you know, uh, the curve is one of the most, you know, fantastic theatres in the UK and the provision on the programme is fantastic. So if I was a student now, I think in my spare time, I will try to go to every single show of, of the curve because it is, it is a fantastic provision. Sorry, you're a theatre fan, clearly. Yeah. Good, okay. Uh, Rupinda. Yes. So um, there was a lot of activities that we did in our spare time, especially because the university for freshers, as you come as freshers, there are so many events that the university itself hosts that um, almost every weekend you have some event either in the university or the uh, Indian society in the university puts up some events. So then we were like, you know, occupied in all of that. And like I also mentioned, um, I wanted to try as many things as I can. So I did go for yoga classes. I did go for salsa classes. And um, there's so much that the city offers you in terms of also culturally. So when there's Diwali, there's you, you actually, you don't feel like you're missing home because when you go to Melton Road, that road is completely filled with Indians, with British Britishers, with every with people from all over the world, and they all are, you know, making an effort to dress up for the event and uh, trying to learn and trying to enjoy as much as they can. So um, every I think as a student, whoever comes here, uh, it's it's just very important to embrace every chance or every event that that you know you can see of on the. On, on DMU's Instagram page now or on the website or anything, you know, just just grab the opportunity, go there and attend it. You know, you you might make new friends, you might like it. So it's always worth giving a shot. Okay. Yeah. And you, Famia? 
intensified by is it? Um, in, in, in terms of um, free time, um, you, uh, sorry, I've already asked you that question, haven't yeah, I? Yeah, yeah. My apologies. Okay, so g given that um, you all came from different continents um, around the world, um, what advice would you give? And I'm going to ask you each this question uh, individually. What advice would you give to an arriving international student that might help them to avoid pitfalls or help them to make the most of the opportunity as soon as they arrive? So let me start with Alice on that, that one. <laughs> I think my advice would be to embrace the fear in many ways. You, I came with a lot of uh, fear, a lot of worries, a lot of um, not knowing um, where will I be, how will I perform on my, on my course, how will I be ever accepted, or uh, will, will I find my way around Leicester, you know, even, even silly things like will I be able to get to university. Those, those are worries that become very um, apparent and they are forefront when it comes to thinking about studying and embarking, embarking on this adventure. But um, I would say embrace that. That's my, that's, my, um, that's my advice because once you go through it, you experience it and once you, um, you try and find ways in which you um, you find your way around Leicester, you experience a new street or a new activity, you find friends. Um, all of those things just click and come together and you realize after a while how much you actually grow as a person. And how one of the things that I, I always tell my students as well is just embrace that fear because that will open your mind, that will make you develop, that will become make you the person that you will be probably in five, 10 years. So embrace the fear, that's my advice. Okay. Juliana? I think for me as well is uh, go to your student union, you know, go to the student union because um, you are not the only one, you know, you may, as you say, you know, there is this uncertainty of something new, but also as well, the how nice to see that, you know, there is a challenge there that you can go over, you know, but you, you don't need to do this alone. You know, there is, there is a spaces and there is, you know, and I think my first point of contact was the student union, you know, because if you wanted to find a place to rent and you didn't know, and you can go there and you can check in a board and you say, oh, there is a space here, you know, and I mean, you don't only need to go to a hall of residence, although in the hall of residence are the best parties. You know, mm -hmm. but you also could go and, and 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 rent a place and know more about the area of the city. And but I think you know, although sometimes you feel oh, it's it's it's, it's a big challenge and coming alone to a new country to a new city. How I'm going to do it? There is people who are ready for. They are here. They are here ready to help. So go to a student union. Talk to other peers. Go to say you know even in your own schools. You know whatever. I'm sure whatever subject you wanted to study here, you know, you can go to your own school and ask for help and meet other students who are in the same situation, you know. It is it is a fantastic time. As I say, you know, my friends from the master at the Montfort University after 20, more than 20 years, are still my best friends today, you know. So if there is so many things that you gain by, you know, by trying, you know, to live, you know, to don't, you know, as you say, it's embracing the fear, but also open to meet other people, you know. So, yes, my advice is go to the student union and, and see who is there. So, take yourself outside of your comfort zone, perhaps. Mm. Yeah. 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 Okay. Rupinda. Yes. Um, I would say that it's very important, uh, especially for international students when they come here, to enjoy every moment of you know their university years because you don't know at the end of the year maybe you want to go back to your country or maybe you want to stay but one thing you'll definitely take with you is the experiences the the friends that you made you know everything that you learned from this country because you you've come so far so you know it's you need to enjoy and just not worry too much about um is this right? Should I do this? Should I not do that? You know, you should just go there, give it a chance and learn as much as you can. 
and uh, also at the same time it's important to be true to yourself you know if mm -hmm. something probably you wouldn't be comfortable in exploring or that is something that it doesn't you know sit in with your principles or morals you don't have to do it there are communities and there are uh, groups of people in the university which will have interests like you do which will have worries like you have so uh, you know you just need to go there find people and um, yeah just just be just be in the moment enjoy it because you you don't know what's there for you ahead so just live in the moment and enjoy it to the most excellent yeah Euphemia yeah I just want to to emphasize what my colleagues have been saying here uh, the importance of networking and my my advice is that uh, don't be a lone ranger or trying to do things yourself because sometimes it's like uh, and also to make use I understand that um for new arrivals, there are there's a sort of an orientation week and a lot of events. So I was thinking that maybe the best way is to to make the most and and to take advantage of every event and to use it as an as a time to network and to make friends. Because you never know, like when the when the academic year progresses, things mm -hmm. might change and get more serious. And it's like you might need like someone to, to 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 have a discussion over an essay. You know, simple things like that they can cause worry in, in unnecessary worry. So it's like when you have people like if you have um, in, a, in, a, in a networks, you can always lean on them, or you can even like just go for a meal or meet up for for tea. Because I I believe like we we are like human beings. We are social social people. We need to interact. And sometimes if we are isolate ourselves, it, we can get overwhelmed and it's not good for our well-being. So it's just that it, I just want to ever emphasize the importance of having like friends or acquaintances or people to talk to when you mm -hmm. need them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's one last question which I which I hadn't uh, warned you about, but um, I, what is the thing that you most enjoyed about your three or four years at, uh, at De Montfort University? Starting with Euphemia, since you already warmed up. Yeah, uh, it, it was one just moment, one final the day I, I graduated. It, I was so I was overwhelmed because uh, they all they stood up, all people stood up, and they went clapping for five, almost five minutes. I, it uh -huh. was touching, and I liked the the whole ceremony, the choir, and therefore yes. the atmosphere. I'll never forget it. I always have it, and the, that was mm -hmm. the 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 peak point in my year. Because I was studying part time, so when you are studying part time, as a like a, a doing research, you don't go for lectures. So I was mm -hmm. just coming like here and there, but it's like that was the moment. Like the, I felt the yeah yeah. This is it. <laughs> yeah, the, the graduation ceremonies are very, very good. I've, I've Two of my daughters have graduated from different universities and I, I went to their graduation ceremonies and there's something about the DMU graduation under normal circumstances and it makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up, doesn't it? <laughs> really, really moving. Yes. Juliana, what about for you? What's the most memorable moment? Uh, there are so many. I think it's unfair to ask this question because there are so many. I think um, one of the things for me, the master, the Moffat University and the master that I did, it opened up the door for opportunities, you know. So it's not only what I did in my master, what became after my master. So, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I feel that some of these um, academics were there. They were key for me for for the success that I have later on, you know. So it they gave me the confidence. They 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 show me that there are people here ready to help. And and as I said and I mentioned before, a Professor Tom Cassidy or Professor Ray Holland, you know, they are, are such important that they're still in my mind, you know. And I think when I finish um, my master, then I went to work and I found work in Leicester, but um and the 
and I did. I work in a, the first social enterprise here in the in in Leicester, who came from a women's association. And after working for there for ten years, I have so many things to think about it. You know that I say, well, I need to do. I I want to carry on my studies after my working experience and think about. You know what are these? You know what it was this experience about comparing with other social enterprises. You know, and to do my PhD, I really needed a a, a letter from my uh, supervisors of the master to be able to enter to um, a, an, another program. Yes, so like fifteen years after I finished my uh, my master. I contact Professor Tom Cassidy and I say, hey, do you remember? I was from Leicester and, you know, you give me this opportunity to do this master. And now I have an opportunity to compete, to have a grant to do a PhD. And I say, will you mind to do this letter and, and uh, for me? And, and he said, straight away, without no doubt, he, he went for it, did a, did a fantastic letter. And this is why then I have this opportunity to to do you know to have a grant to do a PhD you know after 15 years outside the Moffat University you know so the Moffat University I'm in debt with the, with the university because still today he's open open up uh, for me different opportunities you know so they've been mm -hmm. looking after me and, and my career so you know uh, I could highly recommend for that reason. Uh, I think as well, one of the things that I would say to students is uh, that, I mean, enjoy your time studying at the Moffat University, doing the best that you can, but it's also important to think about uh, your degree or your master in terms of your qualification and what mark you have at the end, because uh, I, we, we were really hard when I was doing my master and I have a distinction, and because of this distinction, I was able to uh, to have an opportunity and a grant to do a PhD 15 years afterwards, you know. So, uh, you know, enjoy, you know, as a student, enjoy life here, enjoy your, um, uh, all what Lester is going to bring to you, but also study hard because this also will open for other opportunities. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Helena. Rupinda. Yes. So, uh, like Juliana, I don't have one moment which is memorable. But um, I would definitely say the interactions and design discussions with my professors. And uh, when I mentioned that, yes, I would like to mention that Alice has also been my professor while I was studying in university. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's just that when you have these design discussions with your professors and uh, it just doesn't leave there, you know, they, they do think about what you want to do ahead. And like Juliana rightly mentioned, it did help me a lot to set up my business as well. You know, there, there is a push that comes from your professors when they see that in you. And mm -hmm. uh, that can only be brought when you spend enough time with them, when um, we have enough design discussions where they get to know that, you know, how the way you think, the way you work. And mm -hmm. that motivated me to, you know, take this step ahead uh, and start my own business. So uh, professors have been really helpful. Um, I mean, if it's OK to mention, I would really like to mention Stuart Wright, Rebecca, uh, they were my uh, masters, uh, masters in interior design uh, professors, and they have helped me really a lot in terms of, you know, the whole journey that I had as a student mm -hmm. there. And um, obviously, another memorable moment was when I graduated. So my parents had come down for my graduation. So it was a very uh, lovely and, you know, um, a very different experience because uh, back in India, we don't have such a grand graduations. It's a different kind of graduation that we have there, but um, that is also special. I wouldn't want to uh, say anything less to that, but this was a completely different one for me. And um, yeah, it was, It was. these were a few of my memorable uh, moments that I had here. Okay, thank you, Rupinda. So, Alice, you've had time to think now. Yeah, <laughs> I think, um... For me, it was very, very similar for, with Juliana and Rupinder in the sense that um, I had the perception of on how the relationship between an academic and the student should be. And when I came to the UK uh, doing my master's, I realized that my perception was wrong. There wasn't um, such a hierarchy between the lecturer and the student. We, we became almost like professionals working towards a, a goal a common goal. And I think for me, there was a specific discussion I had with uh, my supervisor at that time, 
uh, Graham Hudson, I'm also going to give him um, a mention, um, in which I realized that I'm, I'm no longer a student now, I'm a professional building up my career. And, and that happened actually, you know, it, it happened immediately afterwards when now Graham is my line manager and he was my PhD supervisor. So he, he and, and not just him, the, the DMU academics tend to be there and nurture you. And I think that's, what, that's what's making the whole experience so special that there's no longer that, that hierarchy between you as a student and a lecturer and I'm, I'm hoping to do the same with with my students hopefully Rupinder. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but another memorable moment I would say for me was when I submitted my dissertation which was the research that I worked on for three months uh, it was a, it was my baby I submitted it and I I was I I, I was it was almost like a a happy and sad moment at the same time because I I was happy I finished it and I submitted it. I had the same sort of um, feeling when I finished my PhD as well. But then it was also sad because I it's what am I going to do next? And then the the moment that really changed my life was just an email that I received from from Graham and said, "Would you be interested in doing some teaching?" And then my life completely changed. So yeah, that's my most memorable moment, I guess, just finishing something and being proud and then embracing what the lecturers taught me and taking that forward. And, uh, Alice, can I just ask, were, were you, was that something you were wanting to do or did that email from Graham sort of come out of the blue? Well, it wasn't something that I knew about myself they mentioned before uh, but i as a person i'm quite introverted i'm 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 not the, the type of person that shouts about themselves and um i i am this quite an introverted person and when i received that email i went for it it was outside of my comfort zone but i went for it i trusted that they saw something and um in many ways i would say teaching found me instead of me finding teaching because of BMU. Uh, and I absolutely love it. I mean, uh, it's it's something that I, I love to do um, since I'm here. Excellent, excellent. Okay, well, um, that's all the questions I got for you. Is there, is there anything anybody else would like to add? I could also yeah. add that the Monfort University give me my my husband and my three kids because I met my, <laughs> my husband at a, a party with the Moffat University when he was doing a master as well, you know. So since then, we never moved from Leicester. We, you know, we feel this place home, you know, and we have three kids and uh, my three kids who are born here in Leicester, they, you know, they, they find the place here. We are welcome as well. It's some of the students, you know, are, you know, they have families as well. It's a very easy place to to come with your own with your own kids, you know, because there is there is plenty of things uh, available for the kids, and um, usually the community schools are very welcoming. So if any of the, your students uh, have family here, I think Leicester is the right place to be. Okay, thank you for that. Well. All that I need to do now is to say thank you very much for sharing your wonderful stories and journeys. Um, really grateful for you giving up your time. I'm um, really glad that you all uh, clearly enjoyed your time at DMU and uh, you're part of the Leicester community now, which is great. So thank you all very much. And I'm sure we'll stay in touch. I hope we will. Uh, and on behalf of everybody that's watching, and everybody that's likely to watch this in the future, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Russell. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.